Good morning. Uh, at this time, we'll call to order the Board of County Commissioners meeting for the purpose of agenda review for next week's meeting. Will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Schaefer. Here. Commissioner Here. Allen. Here. Commissioner Clicka. Commissioner Osterhaus. Here. Commissioner Ashcraft. Here. Commissioner Brown is absent. Chairman Eilert. Here. We do have a quorum present. Uh, would the clerk please read the uh, proposed consent agenda item? Consider accepting fiscal year 2017 emergency solutions grant supplemental funds on behalf of subrecipients still to be determined at no cost to the county in the amount of $337,745. Good morning, Chairman and Commissioners. Um, I'm here today to let you know about this new grant opportunity from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, which I'm asking for your consideration and approval. And I'm Debbie Collins with the Human Services Department. Um, uh, Chairman Eiler, you received a letter back in early July from HUD informing us that we had Johnson County would be receiving funding from an emergency solutions grant fund, also known as ESG. Uh, and these funds are designed to assist those who are homeless in our community or who are, are at imminent risk of becoming homeless. Um, I just want to point out that this funding was not given out as a competitive application process. So this is not something that we actually went out and applied for. Rather, this was part of Congress's appropriation in the fiscal year 2017 budget of $40 million nationwide for this Supplemental Emergency Solutions Grants Program. And Johnson County has an entire Entitlement community was appropriated $337,745. Um, no additional county funding is required to administer this grant, which will largely be passed through to other entities providing the services. Through the Human Services Department, Johnson County plans to partner with United Community Services, which is, as you heard this morning, the lead agency on the con con continuum of care on homelessness. They will help us request applications from our community partners, and eligible, eligible applicants will be community and faith-based qualified private not-for-profit organizations that serve the homeless population or those at imminent risk. Notification of appropriate parties will be done at the continuum of care meeting. Um, and as you heard again this morning, Valerie Carson from UCS described that as a, a group of about 50 different uh, entities that come together. And these are all people who have uh, some kind of service provision available for people who are homeless or, or you know, at imminent risk of becoming home homeless. We will also use all other routine notification methods, including posting the award on our website. We'll do a newspaper notice. Um, and a lot of word of mouth will, will be spread about this particular um, grant. And funding will be awarded based on a review by the Housing and Community Development Advisory Committee. So acceptable activities for this funding include street outreach efforts, emergency shelter, rapid rehousing, homelessness prevention, and there's a certain amount of uh, funding available for a limited uh, homelessness management information system and a little bit for administrative costs. So uh, you heard this morning, um, Valerie talked about the most recent point in time count conducted by the Continuum of Care this past January that they identified 130 people who were homeless in the traditional sense, meaning they were unsheltered or living in places not fit for human habitation. Uh, just to add to that, other more recent or the most recent data that we have from the school districts also indicate that there are between 1,000 and 1,100 students who have identified as homeless at some point during the school year. And most of these children are doubled up with their families in the homes of friends or other family members. So these would not have shown up in that point in time count because they would have been sheltered in some way. And of course, there are many people in Johnson County who are at imminent risk of becoming homeless. We see those folks every day, people who have received eviction notices for not being able to pay their rent. These would be people who would be eligible to be assisted through this program um, with some short-term rent assistance. And so although we didn't apply for this funding and um, we're a little bit surprised when we received it, we're really grateful for it and we know that we can do good things with it. So I'm just here to ask for your approval and consideration of this grant. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Questions? Mr. Ashcraft. Ms. Collins, so how, how will we measure success? 
How will we measure success? Well, that will be determined by the people who are applying for the grant. They'll have to tell us what success looks like. Um, my, my biggest inclination is to say that we will be able to take people you know, during our street outreach um, efforts, we will be actually able to pull people off the streets and get them into some kind of semi-stable housing. Um, so we'll have a count of those kinds of measures. We'll have a count of, you know, the people that we have helped with rent assistance. Um, the, the ultimate goal is that these people become more stable, uh, you know, so we will be, we can follow up with them like in our department with some self-sufficiency training and we'll be tracking all of that, that data. I understand what you're saying. The, I'm a little bit skeptical about this once annual census as being mm -hmm. an effective measurement of homelessness. Do you see that this grant will in any way affect the 130 census by driving it down to 100 or, or, or are those just separate phenomena that may or may not have any impact because th th these are monies that are going to agencies that provide annualized services. Correct. So mm -hmm. it, the connectivity, and we can talk about this offline. Sure. I, I, I have no objections to this, but I, I just want to understand what success looks like because uh, it really seems like a half measure. I'm sorry. Okay. And that's no reflection on you. No, I understand. Okay. Any reason not to continue on consent? Yeah, no, it's fine. All right, so noted. Thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, item number two on the action agenda is uh, meeting minutes. Commissioner Brown was absent, so we'll stay on action. Item number three. Resolution number 086-17 and the City of Gardner application number SP-17-09. Consider a request from Kathleen Warman. Warman Architects and Waffle House Incorporated for approval of a site plan for construction of a commercial building at 1850 East Santa Fe Street, Gardner, Kansas. Mr. Greeley. Good morning, Paul Greeley with the Planning Department. On the screen is a map of the project and property. Uh, here are this top drawing, subject property uh, in circle shows the location. This is in the city of Gardner along uh, Santa Fe Street, 175th Street, just to orient you, uh, this diagonal line is uh, I-35, the I-35 interchange into, into Gardner. Uh, straight north is the big Coleman Warehouse building, this white, white covered uh, rectangle. And then the, the airport runway is this uh, great tan line off to the north. Uh, so this property is uh, within one mile of the New Century Airport, uh, what we're looking at here. And it's within the city of Gardner, but uh, goes through the uh, uh, the county per the uh, the statute, as you all are aware of. Uh, so the uh, airport commission did hold a public hearing on this back on September 27th, and uh, they and county staff uh, recommend approval with uh, stipulations that are in your resolution. I need to add one item or one additional stipulation that was uh, omitted, and that's regarding the airport commission's request to add a red flashing light on top of the, uh, the sign in conjunction with this new business. Uh, the applicant is agreeable to putting an aircraft warning sign uh, light on top of that sign, so they're okay with that. I will add that to the resolution. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Questions? All right. This is a planning item, so we remain on action. And next item. Item 4, resolution number 087-17 and the City of Gardner application number FDP-17-02. Consider a request from Paul Peck, Lux Architects applicant and to on loan owner for approval of a final development plan for construction of a single story multi-tenant commercial building at 915 East Lincoln Lane, Gardner, Kansas. Ms. Greeley. Paul Greeley, Planning Department. Again, another airport area project. Uh, on the screen is a map to show you the location. This property is a little further west uh, into the city of Gardner over near Moonlight in, a, in Santa Fe, 175th Street. The runway, uh, the gray line, again, over here to the side, 
shows the approximate location. Um, the uh, airport commission held a public hearing on this, and they and staff both recommend approval with the stipulations in the resolution. Okay. Questions? All right. Again, planning will remain on action. Next item. Item number five, resolution number 089-17. Conduct a public hearing and consider an island annexation request made by the City of Olathe to annex approximately 1.7 acres of land into the city limits of Olathe, Kansas. Mr. Lynn. Mr. Chairman, Rick Lynn with the Legal Department. County staff received a request from the City of Olathe to approve an island annexation of property into the city limits of Olathe pursuant to KSA 12520C. The real property which is the subject of that annexation is one tract, approximately 1.7 acres in size, and is located just west of the intersection of Lone Elm Road and 175th Street in Spring Hill Township. Um, this is an island uh, annexation that touches another island annexation. Uh, the property owners, Day 3 LLC, gave their written consent to the city for the annexation and the city adopted a resolution where they deemed it advisable for them to annex the land, but asked you to perform your statutory duties under these situations for you to find and determine whether the annexation of such land shall hinder or prevent the proper growth and development of the area or that of any other incorporated city located within Johnson County. That's your test, and that is what you're supposed to look for. The Johnson County Planning Department, however, has issued a memorandum in which uh, they concluded that the proposed annexation would not hinder or prevent the proper growth and development, and they recommended that you approve the annexation. Due to the statutory imposed deadlines um, for this type of action, the board must consider the request within 30 days of receipt. Therefore, you need to uh, decide this matter uh, at your next meeting on November 2nd. State law requires that in order for you to approve this, you must have a two-thirds vote of the Board of County Commissioners. That's of all commissioners on the board. And that would uh, translate into five of seven of you must vote to approve this in order for it to pass. Uh, the city has told us that the intended zoning and use of the property post-annexation, uh, it will be C2 Commercial Center District Zoning with an intended use of mixed-use retail. Be happy to answer any questions. Questions? Mr. Ashcraft. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Lynn, what, when you say proper growth and development, what, what's the criteria we should be considering in making a determination like that? I, I mean, those are nice sounding words, but what, what, what do they mean? Well, what our planning department uh, does is they look at the comprehensive plans for both the uh, city and the county, and they see uh, as to what do the plans call for the uses. Is there any, is there any part of what they're intending to do? Uh, let's just say, for example, they're going to put in a use post-annexation that would be very disruptive to the area that could hinder the development of the area. If the development of the area is, is typically one type of use and you're going to bring in another use which is going to be disruptive to the area, that could hinder or prevent the growth. Also hindering or preventing the growth of another city would be, hey, wait a minute, uh, there was an uh, annexation agreement and you're infringing upon that agreement. Someone else should really be, some other jurisdiction should really be doing that. Our planning department looks at those type of things as well. Okay. Your second point definitely makes sense when it involves another community. But do we know what's going into this property? Uh, yes. They've told us that the intended um, zoning post-annexation will be C2 community center district, and the intended use is mixed-use retail. So that's set. They, they won't change that or can't change that at this point. Is that what you're saying? No, they can change it. But one, one of the, and I've alerted the city to this, uh, that uh, Kansas case law uh, for 520Cs uh, ask you uh, to look at what is the intended use. 
uh, if they change that use, it could, it could have an effect. Uh, they, they could change the use, but the, the testimony and evidence before you is that's what they intend to use it for. So would it invalidate this action if they changed it radically? Great question. Haven't had that come up. Okay. I think you'd have a judge uh, make that determination. I think the chair is probably correct. Very good. Thank you. All right. Uh, again, this will remain uh, on action. Uh, it does require a public hearing. Uh, next items, uh, let's take the next three uh, together. Uh, Mr. Waters, if you can uh, be brief in uh, describing the uh, issues involved on all three of the chair will, or the clerk will please read the items. Item number six, resolution number 090-17, consider adopting amendments to the Johnson County Public Art Program. Item number seven, consider eliminating the public art allocation for the medical examiner's facility. Item number eight, consider reducing the amount of public art, public art allocation for the new courthouse to an amount not to exceed $500,000. Mr. Waters. Joe Waters, County Manager's Office. I, I will be brief, uh, Mr. Chair. The first item uh, relates to the uh, resolution itself and the establishment of the Public Art Commission. Uh, these are all of these actions that, that are part of the resolution were discussed in the study session, the joint study session between the Board of County Commissioners and the PAC um, several weeks ago. The three items are, number one, reducing the, up, the upward allocation limitation, which is $1 million today on a 1% of a selected projects basis, reducing that down to 500000 Another point of clarification is to be more clear in the, in the resolution uh, and, and the associated plan that the maintenance is an ongoing operating expense and, and not an expense to, to be taken from the project, the 1% component. And then the other is the elimination of the Public Art Trust Fund as a part of the program. Uh, staff is recommending that the board consider including replacing that with a gift fund so that in the event that grants or private contributions or things like that for art are received, we have a place to put those in, in an intended purpose. So those are the items associated with that action. The next, uh, I believe, is the medical examiner's facility. Again, in that same study session, uh, there was a, a conversation about the elimination of the, the funding for that particular project, the, the public art funding for that particular project. This is the, the briefing sheet that uh, lays that out for you and, and, and puts it in front of you to make for, take formal action. And then the next is uh, affecting the public art allocation for the new courthouse. There was conversation about, again in the same study session, reducing that down from a million to $500,000. There were some other numbers also discussed, but 500,000 seemed to be what we heard as staff. So we bring that to you, of course, you can adjust any of these numbers that you like, but that's, that's what we had heard. Um, this is a bit of belt and suspenders, the, this uh, courthouse action. If you take action on the resolution that reduces the upward amount from a million to 500, and that is also your intention on the courthouse, could be argued this isn't necessary. The belt and suspenders part is the courthouse project was approved by this body um, before this change that you may be making on this resolution. So just to be sure that we are all clear about what, what funds are being ex planned for what projects. Okay. Well, I should, I should note one item of, of, of discussion which, was, uh, which needed clarifying at the study session, uh, the uh, trust fund, which was noted, uh, uh, asked why, where, where the maintenance funds would come from. Uh, for public art, and uh, that uh, in the original resolution is not part of the uh, trust fund. Correct. Uh, and so uh, to be more accurate in what the trust fund was to be used for, uh, renaming it as the gift fund, which would allow us to receive gifts, and that was in my understanding the original intention of the trust fund, quite frankly. So yes, sir. other questions? Mr. Ashcraft? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As one that wears suspenders without a belt, uh, maybe before next week uh, we could visit a little bit, give me a clarification on a few things. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Clinton. 
I, I guess we can get into this next week, but um, I think from from a public's perspective, it's it's not as far as I see it. It's not that we're taking an anti-art position. Some of us believe that the art should be incorporated at, into the original design and concept and incorporated throughout that process. And it seems like every time we separate out these funds and these these items, it's the project itself gets politicized or there's a, a love or dislove for the for whatever the results of that art process is and it's my belief that if we incorporate this in the theme of the overall building um, we we're just not segregating dollars for kind of dealing with an issue here so that's my thought All right any other comments all right, uh, well, that concludes uh, the agenda review for next week. Uh, we uh, are adjourned, and we'll reconvene uh, for agenda review for the Public Building Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair.